Hey y'all, how y'all doing? It's been a minute since we last, uh, we're back in the gardens, y'all. Um, yeah, I've been busy uh, with work, but also just low-key tired. Like, I would post stuff on my Instagram, but also just didn't want to do too much extra work, so I've been kind of laying low, just kind of grinding in the garden. A lot has changed in here. Um, like, a lot has changed in here. I'll talk about it all. Um, it's kind of ugly in the garden now too because in the spring everything's beautiful, right? Because you have all this new life, um, new growth in here. Uh, but then when you get to the late summer, uh, going towards fall, a lot of things are getting up in age, like they're older plants. And so you don't have as much um, vibrancy in them. And you also have more pest damage um, and a lot more things you have to deal with. Um, they've been in the ground for a long time. so. I'm just going to talk to you guys about what we got going on, um, maybe harvest a couple things, but not too much going on, but yeah, so let's get at it. Welcome back to the Ojo Project, um, yeah, where right, so I'm going to walk back up to the top of the garden, the first thing I want to talk to y'all about are um, the watermelons, so this is a watermelon plant right down here. Um, sprawling all over the place and then we got another one over here and you can actually see there's a melon on it um, which is really cool that's awesome um, and we have another melon over here I think it's a different variety um, and there's another one over there in the corner I don't know if you can see it if you can't see it it's there whatever uh, but yeah so the melons are coming along We'll see how they do this year. I don't know if we're going to get that big or anything like that. Then we still have a couple cabbages um, still on the ground. Uh, we're also planting some new cabbages, actually. So I'll show you all over here um, as we come down this side of the garden. Um, so this is a red cabbage. Um, we got one right here as well. There. A couple red cabbages in there. And then at the very and the green plants right there uh, that is a Chinese cabbage uh, so we had Borlotti beans in this area we took them out maybe a week ago or not even a week ago and then uh, I put some compost down on top like this um, and I just planted these, these uh, plants that I started in a seed tray into it um, so hopefully we'll get enough time to have these cabbages to grow they are cold hardy so meaning that like we our first frost is around like october 15th um but even by then um these plants will be bigger they'll be able to survive that first frost um and maybe we'll even cover them if it's going to be a really bad frost like bad frost meaning like below 25 degrees below 27 degrees we'll cover them um otherwise they'll be fine um but yeah, and then we have our eggplants over here. Um, they're doing pretty well. We have different types of eggplants, as I was telling you. Um, there's this white one that's great that we like a lot. This one, I didn't, we didn't know we were going to get, but it's like a green one. This one's actually ripe. We're going to let it ripe, though, so we can get seeds from it. Because uh, we harvest our own seeds a lot of the time. And then we have this... Oh, there's really small green one, which is really cool. Uh, and we have another small white one. Let me show you. You can kind of see that right there. That's a small white one. Uh, but the eggplants, they're doing okay. I think they have a disease on them, so all these leaves are kind of yellow. Uh, but it's okay. Yeah. Um, and over here in this part of the garden is a bunch of mishmash stuff. So we have some oak grow that are over here we actually have a pumpkin that we didn't mean to grow that's just growing I think it's probably from compost but voila pumpkin um, and then there's another one that's hanging up outside the fence so that's cool uh, the oak grow are growing really well let me show y'all like see that right there that's really cool oh, that's awesome um, yeah, so, and then we have some sweet potatoes right here. Those are growing. We'll harvest them maybe like a month and a half, two months, but they're doing well. 
Uh, more eggplants, some bell peppers. I actually show you the bell peppers right here. Um, so that's awesome. Yeah. And then over here we have some carrots. Um, I had carrots over here. I pulled all these ones up, and now we have some beets in the ground. Um, these beets I'm actually not growing for myself. Um, I don't like beets, so. Or like, I, my sister likes beets a little bit, so we'll grow some for her. But really growing this to give away to people. Um, so hopefully I can I can get some of this from friends and whatnot, because um, I know some people who like beets. But yeah, and then we have the carrots I was talking about. These carrots they're in the ground, been in the ground for a while. Um, let me see. Try to pull one. Let me try to get one that's over here actually. This one right here, ready? Ooh, it's oh. a nice carrot. Word, yeah. So we're gonna let them grow longer because it's not like it's kind of small. Uh, this variety doesn't get too too big, um, but yeah, we'll see. Um, over here, there are summer squashes. So you have like zucchinis and yellow squash in there. I'm not gonna show y'all to those too much because it's like whatever. Um, they're coming to the end of the life cycle. But yeah, they're cool. Then we have our second planting of corn. Um, these guys are really just growing big. Um, like, I am, let me change the camera. I am, what, six foot three? And you can see these corn are already up to me. Um, they're just starting to put their tassels out, which are these right here. So these are the tassels. If you can see that, yeah, these are the tassels. And so, yeah, they're just starting to put tassels out, so they're gonna get really tall. I'll walk you over to this corn over here, actually, which we're having issues with because the damn squirrels have been getting in here and eating our corn. So you can kind of see right there that they've come into this that's squirrel damage right there my dad's even like put up uh cardboard around some of the corn to kind of protect it but yeah the corn this corn is like 14 feet tall or not 14 maybe like 10 feet tall um but yeah it's really cool um see how tall it is yeah um then i guess Let's quickly talk about tomatoes, um, and then tomatoes and okra as well, and then I'll talk to you about the brassicas that we have over there. Um, but yeah, so right over here, we have all of our tomato plants. Um, you can see, like, these tomatoes are beautiful. Um, cherry tomatoes. We don't really eat cherry tomatoes too much, but we have some growing. Uh, and then we have um, these, like, regular... They, all right, first of all, they look ugly, right? You see all this disease right here? The dried up leaves. Yeah, it's not beautiful. Um, but the fruits are still like producing. Um, I'll show you another part of the garden. Or right here actually. See like those fruits are starting to get red. Um, we'll actually pick them at that point in the ripening stage um, because otherwise if we don't pick them at that point um, we're not sure if it's a skunk that's got into the garden or if it's the squirrel or a chipmunk. But essentially what's happening is that they're getting eaten. Um, so that's like nasty. We don't like that at all. I'm gonna drop that. But yeah, the tomatoes are getting eaten if you leave them into the in the garden too long um, to ripe. So we take them out the garden. Um, just makes our life easier. Um, and then this is where our okra are, right here. See, I've gone pretty tall. Um, let me walk up this way, actually. I'll show you some okra. Yeah, so that's an okra right there. A couple right here as well. That's pretty awesome. Uh, there's a red okra, actually. You see this right here? It's kind of dark, but um, you kind of see it. It's really nice. There's a couple in here actually, um, but 
yeah, we have the oak growth been cropping pretty well over the course of the year. I'll try to get out of here if I can. Ooh, easy. All right, so let's talk about uh, pests and damage. Word, pests and damage. I love this topic. All right, so this is what's been going on. So right over here, um, down here behind me, we had our potatoes. Um, and we had to harvest our potatoes really early because we had a vole issue. Um, voles are like these tiny creatures. They're kind of like sealed mice. They're almost the same thing. And they will crawl in under the ground. They'll eat the things that are like tubers or like root crops. So like they'll eat carrots. You can hold the carrot up. They'll eat carrots. They'll just go. They'll eat them. Um, that's a good carrot actually. Wow. Kind of sweet. Crunchy. Sorry, I'm just that's a really good carrot. Um, a little dirt never killed nobody. Either. It's good for your immune system. But anyways, they eat the they eat the the, t the two of the potatoes. So we had to harvest them early because we didn't want to have to deal with that. Um, and also, I think there was also another disease that was hurting the foliage. So this whole entire area right here is open, right? So we actually just started planting into it. Um, this is the. Chinese cabbage I was talking about earlier. Get some of that out. Um, and then we're hoping also to pass some fall peas. Um, so underneath here, this white cloth that planted some peas. I covered it with the white cloth because the squirrel, again, was getting into it. So that's an issue. Another pest that was really just giving me hell right now. I was like, it's really hurting me. Like, I can't, I don't know what to do about it. Is um, everything that eats these, the leaves of collards, of Brussels sprouts, um, and they also eat cabbage leaves, which is really disconcerting. So, it's, um, I think it's, it's a moth, um, or it's like a caterpillar, and, yeah, so the camera shut off. I have no idea where it left off, but I'm just going to start talking about collard greens, and Brussels sprouts and the damage that they have been going on. So you can look in here with me. You see the damage right there to the collard greens? Like it's supposed to look more like this. Not not really eaten up at all actually. But it looks like that. And that's really disconcerting. Like I'm sad. Like that's it's sad. And then there's this. The Brussels sprouts, also, looking like a skeleton, bro. Looks like some Frankenstein experiment. Like, seriously? We're supposed to be getting Brussels off this, bro. Like, I was really looking forward to having some winter Brussels sprouts. I mean, it's good, boy. Real good. But anyways, what's happening is that um, there's, a, there's this caterpillar that's getting into the leaves and it's eating them. So, all this... All these holes where you see my finger coming through, it's all caterpillar damage. Um, all that brown stuff in there is their poop. And it's nasty. Disgusting. Sometimes we'll come through and I'll pick the, leaf, the caterpillars off. That's so like disconcerting to have to go through a plant and pick off each individual like caterpillar. And then we have, and then you can also spray BT, which is a uh, Bacillus syringensis. It's like a biological. What is it? It's a bacteria that will eat the inside of the caterpillar's stomach liner or whatever. It's like really cool biological warfare, blah, 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 blah. It's cool stuff. But I don't like spraying all the time. It's organic, but I still don't like spraying because I just don't like spraying. Like, I don't want to have to deal with that, so it's tragic. Um, it's happening on these Brussels sprouts, too. You can see them. Yeah. Sad stuff. Anyways, yeah, so over here we had our Borlotti beans. We took them out the ground and I put compost on top. Uh, I'll probably plant a cover crop into this area. So, a cover crop, for those of y'all wondering, cover crops, what they do is that um, you never want to leave your soil completely bare uh, because if you do that, you have issues with um, the, if you have a torrential rain all the nutrients will wash off you have erosion in your garden if you put a cover crop down something like a buckwheat 
or winter cover crops. So winter cover crops are stuff like um, peas, oats. Um, you can put down any type of legumes. So like I'm gonna plant cow peas in this, I think, because or black eyed bees peas because they can j they'll go they'll grow and then they'll die off when the frost hits. So mid October, uh, late October, November, they'll be dead, and you'll just have green on top and all of the foliage. Like, so this is a pepper plant right here, right? So all this foliage, it'll just go back and it'll be on the ground. Um, so if this was a bean plant, it'll just sit on the ground and that's how it would be. Um, and so it'll be able to cover the ground for the winter and we won't have an issue with um, erosion or anything like that. So that's our plan for that area. I'm also gonna do it over there where those, uh, there's a couple squash and stuff over there. Um, yeah, I'm gonna do that there too. All right, peppers. Peppers are dope, dope. All right, anyways, the peppers are... You know, please. Bruh, you don't need to vroom, vroom, vroom. Starting, nobody cares. Sorry. I'm gonna, I'm gonna move. So, anyway, so the peppers are, the peppers are doing awesome. Um, yeah, let's just show you the peppers. So, you got different types of peppers. You got these ones right here. Look at those babies. Those are cayenne peppers. And I think these ones over here are um, ghost peppers. And then you got some habaneros. The habaneros are actually turning. But awesome. But look at these. Mmm, they're so hot. Beautiful. Love it. And then, and then over here. We got some bell peppers. Look at this. Look how big that bell pepper is, yo. Look how big that, man. All right, it's not as big as the one in the store, but it's a big bell pepper for me. And I'm proud of it. Look at that. Look at that big boy. Right, you can't see it on camera, but look at that big boy. It's beautiful. I haven't really never been able to grow bell peppers like this. And also, at the beginning of the year when we seeded them, my dad was like, it's too late to grow bell peppers. What are you doing? And I was like, just watch. And watch. See what's going on right now? It's beautiful. I'm happy. I'm proud. You know, that's all God right there. He came through. He was like, I got you, son. And I was like, thank you. Appreciate that. Anyways, next. This is our great experiment right here. So in this area where I'm about to show you, we had the onions before, right? There are no more onions over here anymore. Man, it smells like skunk. I hope it's not skunk up in here. But anyways, there were onions in here. And... Onions are gone. I planted some butternut into the onions, if you remember that. And the butternut have taken over. And we built a trellis out of our, um, like, an old bed frame, like my sister and I used to share when we were kids. And, yo, it's beautiful. Just look at this, yo. This, this. Hold on, come, come here. All right, so this is the bed frame. You see how, like, you know, the red. And then we have some pine. Things that are stuck in the ground. And Dad and I dug them in the ground. We have a blue one over here. But this is the beautiful part, yo. Look at this. Oh my, look at that butternut squash. Look at that one, look at that one. Look at this one right here. There's another one over there, another one over there. We're able to use different levels of the earth to be able to grow. So we have on the ground, the butternut is doing well, but then up in the air, it's also growing amazingly. And we're doing this because we don't have enough space in the garden to let it just run everywhere right like we have to really capitalize on vertical space if we want to be able to you know grow something like a butternut squash so we have it's amazing look look down here look down here i don't know if you see that one it's beautiful it's beautiful like look at this this is amazing i'm just so happy about that they truly, truly blessed. I need to think about ways I'm gonna cook the butternut though. I have some ideas, but I need to like think about it. Anyways, let's talk tomatoes real quick again. So, we have a succession crop of tomatoes going on uh, right here. So, you see they're like much smaller than the rest of the tomato plants I showed you. It's because we planted these later. We're hoping to get like a second crop of tomatoes. Um, so we planted these, I think around June 1st from seed. Um, and then we put them in the ground maybe mid-July 
And we did it this way. We, we should have planted them earlier from seed. We should have planted it mid-May, I think. And then put them in the ground at the same time in July, whatever. But, like, so they were bigger plants then. And the idea behind this is so that we're able to, um, what's the name, get, like, another cropping of, of uh, tomatoes. Um, we have a lot of tomatoes, but we like to get our tomatoes so that we can have them for sauces and whatnot. Um, so, like, I'll show you some of the tomatoes we have here. Now, like, this is our tomato patch. It's huge. Um, but, and the plants look kind of ugly. They've done well, though. We're proud of you. Thank you. All right, so, these are tomatoes right here. Um, yeah, you know. They, they, they're a little ugly right now, but you can see them. Um, that's great. Then, coming over here, we have some leeks in the ground. These leeks are not doing fantastically well because of where they're at. They're being stepped on. So that's okay. Then we have some yellow wax beans. Hopefully we'll be able to get a crop out of these beans before it frosts. I should have planted them about three weeks earlier than I did. But you know what? It don't matter. We just experimenting out here. Having fun, enjoying ourselves. Trying to see if uh, we can, you know, grow food. Um, but yeah, the tomatoes. So, you can see down here, we have different types of tomatoes. Um, yeah. Really beautiful. Like, yeah. Alright. So, yeah, I think I showed y'all around the whole garden. Um, this video is kind of shaky. Sorry. <laughs> I've just tried to, I've tried to give y'all something real quick. Um, my dad's coming out to pick some tomatoes actually right now, I think. He has his basket on him. Probably going back inside for gloves or something. Um, here over there. Ha ha ha. Hey dad. Anyways. Yeah. That's the video. I hope y'all stay blessed out there. Um.